So welcome everyone to the session, Nurture Your Epic Flow State with Appium and VS Code by uh, Christopher Hiller. We are glad they can join us today. Without further delay, over to you, Christopher. Hi, thanks. So uh, I'm gonna start and share some awesome slides that I made for this and let's do it here. All right, so this is actually kind of ugly on purpose, but this talk is Nurturing Your Epic Flow State with Appium and VS Code. My name is Christopher Hiller. I'm a staff engineer at Sauce Labs in the open source program office. I'm pretty new to Appium. Uh, I, I started working on it back when I started at Sauce Labs in April of this year. Um, so I am, yes, I'm on the Appium core team. I also have experience uh, maintaining a, a testing framework, which is Mocha for JavaScript. And uh, also I'm, uh, on the Node.js core team, though I haven't really contributed anything in a while. And of course, there's a podcast. I'm on a podcast called JS Party, which is a lot of fun. Please check it out. And if you see this orange skull or the name Bone Skull on the internet, that's probably me. So um, what I wanted to, let me jump out of here real quick. But um, what I wanted to do was kind of what are we talking about? We're talking about a, a Visual Studio Code extension. And so why did I make this? Well, the idea is developers. So I am a developer. I've, I've been a developer. And what I can, from what I can tell, you know, developers don't often reach for Appium. And I think there's, there's a lot of places where developers could be reaching for Appium, especially uh, when, when you need to develop for mobile web or when you need to build cross-platform mobile apps, say like a React Native thing. Um, you know, QA uh, aren't the only people who need to do these tests, uh, do test automation, you know, developers need to do it too. Um, but Developers who are doing these cross platforms, cross platform things like in in uh, React Native or what have you, you know, they're they're writing in TypeScript, they're writing in JavaScript, and developers who are writing in TypeScript or JavaScript generally use VS Code, and so I, I got to thinking, well, what if we made this easier in in the IDE of of choice for so many people in this area, and so this this project is sort of a part of a, a, a larger effort. And that effort is let's let's make Appium better for a developer use. Let's make Appium something that a developer wants to pick up. And this is this is a part of that. Um, when you have the the ease of use and you have the ability to work with a tool like Appium in your IDE, that's where your that's where you keep your 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 epic flow state going, right? You don't want to have to context switch out and, and jump around to various different apps and command line interfaces to get things running. You want to be able to do it all from your IDE with your key bindings and, and your fancy dark theme and whatnot. So that's the idea here. And so uh, what I want to show is this this extension I've been working on. I I, I published it today on the marketplace. And so it is should be considered an early alpha. It's not feature complete. Um, but you know, the sky is kind of the limit. I think there's a lot of opportunity to to kind of, I don't know, expand and, and move more deeply in certain directions. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be. And I'm hoping to get some feedback from um, from the user, the user base, anyone who wants to check this out. But uh, I have a uh, a lovely demo I recorded earlier today, and I want to play it for you now. So I'm going to do that. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to install the extension Appium Toolbox for VS Code. Uh, what we see right here is a pretty empty project. And we want to click over here to the left where it says uh, this is extensions. And this is where you're going to install any plugin or extension that's available in VS Code. And 
There's all sorts of stuff I've already installed, but uh, we want to install the Appium one. And so I'm going to go in here and search for Appium. And there it is. And we can see here there's a README, lots of information about it. And uh, considering I just published it today, we're already five versions in. Uh, having a few problems with bundling, but uh, just, just growing pains. So I'm going to click install. And this might take a minute because this extension actually bundles Appium 2. Um, we can change that so it might download it on the fly later, but right now it bundles Appium 2. Uh, it will also allow you to use an Appium installed locally to your project or an Appium installed globally on your system if it can find one. So it is installed now. Yay! I want to show you next the, uh, the settings that this thing provides. And so if I want to go to the settings, here I am at the settings. It was like command comma for me. Um, these are your, all your settings for VS Code. Each extension, most extensions have their own settings and they're listed down here in extensions and ours is the first one because it starts with a so appium and there are two kind of main areas of this configuration one is the server defaults and this corresponds to uh, flags or settings for a local server the next one is uh, session defaults which is uh, defaults for connecting to to servers and we can see how these things will uh, Kind of come into play later um, but the next thing i want to see is the output uh, so if you're ever having problems with this extension and you probably will then you want to open up a terminal and you can show the output so let's see how do we do that um, i'm just going to show output so appium show extension out but there are other ways you can get here but um, that is the command that just it just opens up this little debug log and um, it'll show you what it's doing uh, i believe it's set to only show info um, maybe i could change it so it would allow you to see the debug messages but for now it's going to tell you a little bit about what it's doing and so that's just there in case you need it the next thing would be starting a local server. And the way you're going to start a local server with this, this extension is to use a task. And a task in VS Code is much like a custom script that you would have in a different IDE. Um, but they are tasks in VS Code. And the task definitions, when you create one, they're stored in this .vs Code directory in a file called, called tasks.json. So, to configure a new task to start the server, I'm going to press, for me this is F1, but this is the command palette and you can do any command uh, that is available in VS Code just from right here, which is pretty handy. And if I type Appium, what can we do here? Um, no, that's not it. We want to configure a task. Okay, so this will show you the types of tasks you can configure and this depends on your extension so uh, for example um, the eslint extension provides one that you can use uh, these are kind of like pre-made extension or pre-made tasks lint the whole folder okay great that's just the task you can run um, for us that's the start appium server task and so we click that and it creates a tasks.json file and in this file it will put a task definition and the type of our task is appium server this is basically every extension every type of task will have uh, its own uh, own special name there so if i like took this out for example i could change all these different things of, i don't know what kind of type we want like npm or something um, and if I use npm, that's a whole se separate separate uh, way of def defining it. But uh, so we have appium server um, and the address. This will be the address that the server binds to and the port. And we're just telling it to use bundled appium for now. And you can change that if you want. Um, 
and this is the label or the name. So when you want to run this task, you uh, will refer to this name. You'll, you'll see it in the list. The problem matcher is a setting we're not using right now, but uh, that essentially tells VS Code that uh, when running the task, if there's some output that matches the problem matcher, then it can communicate to VS Code that, hey, there was a problem, and you can take actions based on that problem. Like, hey, there was an error. Let's pop up the, the, the thing so you can look at the log. So we, we're not using that right now, but we, we might. So we have defined this task, and we can run it. And again, this uh, in the command palette, run task is what I want. And it'll show us a list of things we want to do. And so there's all these other ones that just are, this is contributed. So they're, they're essentially just tasks that will automatically get created um, based on what's in your project. But for us, we've defined one and that's start Appium server. And so we'll run that. And so we can see a terminal pops up below and we can make this a little bigger. So this is executing task, start Appium server. And this is a, this is a, not really a terminal, so it's a, it's a pseudo terminal. Um, but it basically just runs the bundled Appium in, a, uh, in the pseudo terminal and it passes the arguments from the task into it. And we can see that we're running Appium version two and it's got uh, UI Automator installed because I've installed that uh, evidently lo uh, locally in my machine. But now we got the server running, which is cool. So if we want to kill the server, we, we can trash it. Boom, it's gone. So you may have noticed this little thing down here and this uh, appears in the Explorer view. Uh, I may move it to its own panel because um, it's there's well there's a lot of crap installed here I probably should get rid of. But anyway there is this loading Appium servers and this little this little tree will help you look at your sessions and we'll see. So let me close that out. We don't need this task right now. Um, but hey here's a little button that's what is that going to do? That's going to add a server. So let's click that. All right. And so it gives me a editor, and this is a custom editor for a file. And this file is called new server .appium server. And an Appium server file, which is, as far as I know, unique to this extension, is just a JSON file. Okay. Um, but this is a kind of easy view into the data. And we can see that there's some stuff populated already. It pulls that out of our, our settings, our session defaults. And uh, for example, the remote Appium version, well, if we're gonna run the local uh, bundled server, that's gonna be version two. And these all look fine. Nickname, let's give it a, 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 a nice nickname like nurturing flow. Okay, and that's my nickname. And so I'm gonna, s let's see, there's some other settings here, but let's just save that. All right, so I saved it and maybe I can rename the file, say nurturing, or how about like epic flow or something. And so this is epic flow.appium server. And now over here, it doesn't know about this server yet. Um, I'll probably change it so it, it automatically recognizes when one of these gets added to the workspace. We can refresh the servers and what is this? Wow, it's already in the tree and says, hmm, no sessions, it's offline. Well, what can we do about that? Well, we can run our task again. Let's start it. So run task, start Appium server, and it should be online. And if we wait a second, it should go. There it is, it's online, yay. And we can see that the extension is actually calling the server. It's in, and it's trying to hit a couple endpoints like status and sessions and stuff like that. Uh, but we don't have any active sessions, so that's still empty. Um, but say we wanna kill this and take it back offline. And this is gonna pull every, I don't know what it is, 10 seconds or something like that. And it should switch from online back to off. There it goes, offline. Okay, but we can do a little better than that. Let's actually start a session and see what happens. So I have an Android emulator running in the background and an Appium inspector pointed at it. And let me start the session. And then we will wait for it to refresh. 
And so that's set to do it every 10 seconds. So it, there it is. So it sees a session. And in lieu of anything else, the session ID is the name. It does mention that it happens to be Android. Um, there are capabilities and other information uh, that I'm not showing right now. But you will notice this little camera, which says take screenshot. Let's take a screenshot. Wow, it got a screenshot of my session. And so, yeah, I'm using the Sauce Labs mobile app, uh, sample mobile app. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, huh? All right, so that was the that was the demo, and I'm gonna switch back over to to the slides. So, whoa, I want this button. Um, right. So here is some information about this thing, and you can take a look at that if you like. But um, I just kind of wanted to say, you know, there there's a lot of things we could do with this this extension. It's it, obviously it's it's pretty new and raw, but there's a lot of uh, directions we could go with it. And I'll pop this right back up in a in a second here. But um, for example. Uh, maybe with, you know, with Appium 2, we have that whole command line interface of driver and plugin management. Well, it would be cool to have a thing in there where you could just add a driver in the UI or look at the installed drivers, add and remove, you know, stuff like that, package management type tasks. And that would be neat. Um, you know, cloud vendor specific stuff, uh, much like, like uh, an Appium inspector would have settings and capabilities all, all pre-configured for you for the various cloud providers. Um, you know, if, if you're running ser uh, uh, servers locally, maybe you wanna grab the logs from the servers, or um, I can certainly see a, um, a use case where you're running your tests and you're hitting Appium and something's going wrong and you don't know what's going on. You just, you could slap a, a breakpoint in there. And uh, when the breakpoints hit, uh, press the screenshot button, you know, st stuff like that. And um, certainly porting to other IDEs is a possibility. Uh, you know, I would, I would like to kind of focus on this one first. Um, but certainly I think uh, most of the people using Appium are, are not actually using VS code. And so this, this is not necessarily for the people who are not using VS code, right? Because it's a VS code extension. Um, but you know, if it, if it does get traction and, and people do like it, well, it makes sense to put, put that into other, other IDEs, maybe your, your X codes or your Android studio or your jet brains, um, that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to get really fancy, uh, you know, um, Appium Inspector is an Electron app. VS Code is an Electron app. We could run Appium Inspector in VS Code somehow. I don't know. Uh, maybe there is some vendor specific stuff. Like I know you could get video from Sauce Labs or something like that right there in your IDE, and that would be awesome. Um, you could even go as far as managing your emulators uh, or starting an emulator, that sort of thing. Um, so there's there's a whole 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 lot we can do with it. And so I'm, I'm interested in feedback uh, from the community and uh, I would love your, your ideas and thoughts and um, yeah. So uh, again, here are these, these links that you can probably still see. Uh, check it out in the video uh, in the Visual Studio Marketplace, which is where you would you would go to download this sort of thing. It's up up there on GitHub uh, right now. It is under my account, but might move to like I don't know the Appium one or someplace else. Um, and I am Bone Skull, uh, but my name is Chris actually, not Bone Skull. Um, anywho. Uh, that's what I got. Um, so thank you very much, Appium Conf, and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you, Christopher, for um, demoing the extension you developed and that just went live today. Uh, we have one question from the audience. Um, that's from Omka. How to configure the app path to this plugin? I think I'm going to need some more information. I'm not sure what you mean by app app path. 
Oh, oh. So you mean the the path to your the thing that you're right? No, you don't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that in in this. Uh, you would use whatever you know. You you have your client, and your client is going to go um, and and do that sort of thing. Uh, whatever is creating a session is going to de- going to put in the capability and say what app that you want to test. And so that's not this. This is more for, um, at least right now, it's more for uh, interacting directly with the server. Yeah, we don't have any more questions as of now. Thank you once again, Christopher. Thank you.